That all takes us to our talk of the tape with investors squarely focused on the blessings of a soft economic landing, a benign Fed, and an exuberant AI build out. Are there any hazards being ignored? Let's ask Brent Talkington, requisite capital management managing partner and a CNBC contributor. So, Brent, it's, uh, it's great to, to have you. I mean, obviously, good news can be good news. The market is, is fully embracing what it sees in front of it. Um, do you think it can be that easy uh, for a while longer, or, or should we be uh, on the lookout for a little more uh, chop here? You know, bull markets always feel is easy in hindsight. Yeah. You know, we've had, Mike, a year of return in three months, right? Whether you look at pretty much every broad index is up close to nine, seven to 10 percent. And so I just think it's natural. We're not going to continue on this three-month tear that we've had, that you would have some settling out. But I think unless some exogenous event, which isn't even worth talking about because it's exogenous by, by, by nature, it just seems like we're in this really nice area where the market's not panicking about the 10-year solidly above four. The market's not panicking that we went from six to three rate cuts. And so it really comes down to excitement about AI, but also a broadening out of returns being enjoyed by many, many other sectors and securities besides NVIDIA, Meta, and Microsoft. That is for sure. Um, people asked for it, and the market delivered it uh, this year so far in terms of broader participation. Uh, you know, I, you mentioned it's like a year's worth, an average year's worth of returns in three months, but it, it's also true that in bull markets, it's actually rare for 12 months to give you 8 to 10 percent. Usually kind of overshoot to the upside. You get, the, you know, the, the, the S&P has been up more than 20% in a calendar year, like three times as often as it's been down 10%. So I guess the question is, is there any reason that you would want to be rebalancing away from what has been winning already and looking for still other things that haven't yet uh, quite caught a bit? You know what, what, how we've been allocating is, I would say we have our, our, our core kind of down the fairway S&P exposure, but really barbelling that with technology and then companies that have a high free cash flow yield. And whereas last year it was really just the NASDAQ and that free cash flow yield, I think they're like nine or 10 percent. You're already seeing those types of those types of companies, which actually are more value biased, do really well this year. So we're going to stick with what's working, having that, you know, core S&P exposure with a barbell around tech and then free cash flow yield. I think that's going to continue to be a, a winning recipe. In terms of some of um, of your core Holdings. I know you do own Apple, and you know it's it's about flat for the week, actually. Even though it did have this big wobble uh, and is relatively underperformed after the Department of Justice suit, the news out of that yesterday. What's your read right now on maybe not just the merits of the case, but how Apple finds itself right now having to persuade investors that it can kind of clear that uh, hurdle, but also prove that it's going to re-enter growth mode. Well, I mean, re-enter growth mode has been a question for some time. And I think the reason why you have a premium on the stock is like a Costco, like a Procter & Gamble, their earnings are very durable and stable and they have this such a huge installed base. Apple's down, what, 10% for the year? And so I think it's less about this DOJ, but more about they don't have an AI story, which is fine, but that's like exciting for investors. And I think that we're really gonna have to wait one or two cycles, I think, to get people really wanting to upgrade. And then if you want to talk about, you know, the DOJ suit, I think it's not even nearly as explosive as, as it could have been once, once I read through it. Okay, so you don't think that... Well, I was interested to see the fact that the, that the stock did go down 4% on the, on the news. In other words, you know, everyone's looking at the same details. It seems the kind of thing we thought that the authorities might scrutinize and, and, and try to contest, mm -hmm. and yet the market sort of backed away. Right. Well, it's kind of, you know, it's interesting if you, if, you, if you just even skim through it, it seems like, I mean, there's multiple points, but to me, they're, they're, they're having an issue with Apple because in order to watch, I mean, this is their quote, high quality videos, you have to buy a very expensive phone, which like, that doesn't make any sense. It's like, well, it's expensive because it, it gives so much value. And then, you know, they don't like the Google that you, when you text from an Android, it turns green. And... You know, they're very competitive, but to me, this is not a Microsoft case like we saw in the, in, the, in the early 2000s or late 90s with the Microsoft, which I think had so much teeth and meat and really, and really put Microsoft back 
years and years, and by the way, allowed other companies to go forward. I think this is going to last a while, but I don't think it's going to be a hangover on the stock very long. I think it's more about the AI story and the refresh of the Apple phone. When's that going to be? And how much? How many people are going to upgrade? To me, is what you need as a catalyst to get the stock above that 250 or 100 or 100-day or, or moving average.